100% DCI-P3. You've probably seen this plastered on almost every new laptop and even smartphones now. And while 98% of the monitors don't get 100% and instead make do with 98%, 95% or 90% DCI-P3, it's still DCI-P3. I will come to why this is the case a bit later so don't forget to subscribe and so, is this important? Well, it's complicated. DCI-P3 stands for Digital Cinema Initiatives Protocol 3 and basically it's to do with having a wider color range and a display, 25% more than the current standard which is the sRGB. Now, because almost everything is made to sRGB standard currently, viewing from a 100% to 90% DCI-P3 spec panel will basically make the colors look richer if not the exact color the creators intended. But this rich look makes the SDR content feel like HDR, like black looks black instead of grey and when viewing in HDR, the sRGB content looks even better. So the inaccuracy is not exactly minded by the consumers. However, with that said, most HDR content has started to use DCI-P3 standards in the creation process. This means videos edited or websites created are being created on a DCI-P3 panel with that wider color range availability. So viewing this content from an sRGB panel will feel weird like red made in a DCI-P3 panel will look more pink in an sRGB panel, calibrated panel. However, games are still using sRGB mostly. This is why most gaming laptops with Full HD displays stick with sRGB for now, along with the fact that it's cheaper and easier to calibrate to sRGB in a smaller color space. But this is probably the second last year in which that will be the case. This is mainly as the industry is moving away from sRGB to DCI-P3 due to 1. Most smartphones are starting to support DCI-P3 color space and thus more apps are being built to it especially games. Secondly, the next-gen console games are also being built for HDR now and some studios have started using DCI-P3 color space as that's a much better option when trying to make games with HDR compatibility. So with more content and apps being made to DCI-P3 standard, it will be a really good idea if your next laptop or monitor or TV has at least up to a 90% DCI-P3 spec panel fitted, cause that's going to be the standard in about 2 years time. Now large monitors tend to favor 100% or 99% Adobe RGB color space instead of DCI-P3, which is usually a 95% to 90%. It's very similar to DCI-P3 by the way, Adobe RGB, but DCI-P3 favors more red while Adobe RGB favors more green and blue. Not sure why this is the case, but it's something for you to look into. So yeah, that's just a bit of warning from my side and if you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe.